YouTube family. My name is Elisha English and welcome back to my channel. Okay guys, I have a confession to make. I have a new obsession. As many of you know from following our channel, I love textiles and something that I've not really bought a lot of over the years is yarn. I don't crochet and I don't knit, but I just bought a ton of yarn because I have been creating some rainbows, macrame rainbows, and I am hooked. And so I thought today I absolutely need to show you how to make macrame rainbows. Where did this rainbow obsession come from? Well, when the boys were really little, I used to sing them somewhere over the rainbow when they were babies to calm them down. So cute, not a great singer, but did the trick. And now that we've moved to Nova Scotia, we are seeing rainbows everywhere. We see them every week and they always bring so much cheer. And so today I thought I was going to create several of these macrame rainbows. I want to be able to put them in my shop. And I know from my recent craft show that they sold out. The show hasn't even started yet. I'm just hiding behind my table, but I've already sold half of my macrame rainbows. So I know this is something that people will definitely want to buy and I can make them for a pretty reasonable cost. So I'm going to show you how. In order to create the macrame rainbows, you're going to need some rope. And you can basically use any type of variety, but I chose to actually use macrame. This rope I bought in a cording roll, and I can get it usually in a six millimeter or even a thicker eight millimeter. It's really just a matter of preference. And once you make one of your own rainbows, you'll see what thickness you like best, but I preferred a thicker rope. You can also pick it up just in your craft store or even at the dollar store in a smaller amount. This is only 15 feet where this is several hundred feet. But since I plan on making quite a few of these, I went to buy this in bulk. Cuts down my cost if I'm going to make multiples of these. So in order to actually create the colorfulness of your rainbow, you're going to also need yarn. I went a little crazy, bought quite a few colors of yarn, but I think it's going to really go with the look that I want for all of my rainbows to be able to have many different styles. You can use any type of wool you want. Look at the thrift stores and get it on discount because wool can really add up if you're not careful. When you're making your rainbow, inside you're going to have the rope and the yarn, but you're also going to want some wire to help you create the molded shape. I picked up some 18 gauge plastic coating wire here at the hardware store. And to be honest, the first wire that I did was just some green greenery wire and that worked out just fine as well. And I think the gauge was a little lower. And to cut the wire, you're going to need some wire cutters. And I would recommend you have some type of a fabric measuring tape to be able to make your measurements perfect. If you wanna reproduce these in a similar size, it just kind of keeps your size allowance equal. You're going to need a hot glue gun and some hot glue gun sticks, some scissors to cut your yarn and your rope. And then I think that you'll probably want to have some type of a ribbon or a string to hang your macrame rainbow. And so I chose just a very thin gauge jute here. And in order to be able to string it through, you're likely going to use some type of a thick needle to help thread it through. And to add a little final detail to my rainbows, I like to have a few wooden beads to be able to hang on the hanger. But again, this is just personal preference. The first step to making the rainbows is to cut your wire to size. This is going to keep you really in the allowance that you're creating for your rainbow. And since I wanna make a rainbow that's the similar size to the one that I've already created here because I really liked that size, I have already pre went ahead and cut out the arch here just to show you kind of how I gauged what I was going to make the size. And so I just measured approximately what each of my arches of my rainbow were in order to create four layers. If you wanna create more layers than four colors, you just need to add more arches for your rainbow. So I'm going to cut the plastic coated wire and I'm going to use the wire cutters for that. So all I did was I measured how much I wanted and used because I had an example, but you can actually use a straight measurement using the measuring tape. You're just going to cut it to the length that you want and then bend it into the arch. And you'll get to fuss with this after because it's wire. Once you wrap it with your rope and your yarn, you're going to want to manipulate it anyways. So it's just to gauge to get this sort of in the four size gradient for your rainbow. Now that I have the four sizes of my wire, I'm going to straighten them out. Remember, we're going to reshape these at the end. And I'm going to just line it up against my rope here. And what I want to do is leave myself excess on both ends that are eventually going to be the tassels at the end of my rainbow. And when I created my first one, I gave myself a lot of extra because I I wasn't sure how long I would want my tassels to be. So just give yourself a little extra room and you'll get the hang of how long you want it for your next ones. So I'm going to give myself about two inches of fringe on the end on both ends. Don't forget the far end. So it's going to arch and then use my scissors to cut the rope. And you're going to do that for each of the four arches that you made for your rainbow. So there's my first one, approximately two inches on both ends. So I already 
preheated my hot glue gun and now what I'm going to do is take a little piece of the end of the wire, add some hot glue onto it, just a little bit, it's just to be able to help hold the rope in place and I'm going to put it centrally on the rope, making sure that I leave those spaces that I had at either end and I'm just going to put some glue on one end and I'm going to do that to all four. So that leaves me with my wire just attached on the tip of the rope and that will just help to keep the wire where you want it as you wrap your yarn, which is the next part, which is my funnest part, is adding the colors to the rainbows. So one of my favorite things about making these rainbows is being able to create all the color schemes that I need for them. And so for this color scheme, I'm going to go with a blue, a coastal blue, just since I was inspired to make these rainbows from Nova Scotia rainbows. I really love this deep orangey yellow here. It's kind of my color obsession, a really beautiful soft neutral, and then this really shiny pearly white that's going to really accent the bottom of the rainbow. I thought that this color would look really nice against the natural color of the rope that we're using. So first step is to decide what our top arch is going to be and I'm choosing blue for the very top. So the first thing you're going to do is just find the end of your yarn and again you're going to use just a tiny little bit of hot glue, a very small dab because you don't want to see glue at the end or it will look sloppy and I'm going to go about an inch or so down my yarn, a little tiny bit and I'm going to start it right where my wire started and just hold it until it dries. And the reason I didn't put it on the tip is because I'm going to fold this up here and then start wrapping. That way it will never come unraveled. So that's pretty dry, I can start wrapping now. I'm going to hold that down with my thumb just to keep it in place, my rope, my wire, and now my yarn, and I'm going to start wrapping. And it's your preference how tight or how loose you wanna do it, but I like to make mine pretty tight so that I can make the rope consistently the same size all the way down and you're just going to keep wrapping. So you can see I'm weaving in that end piece that I didn't glue all the way down so that it will forever be tucked into that rainbow. Once you do a few of these, you're going to get a lot faster at this process. I'm just showing you slowly, but I can whip through a row of this pretty quickly now that I've made several of these rainbows. So you want to go all the way across until you get to the end of the wire on the other side. And once I get about halfway across, I can switch hands and start wrapping from the other side. So you'll notice that I'm working right off of my yarn ball and I'm not actually cutting it because I don't know exactly how long it needs to be to get it to the other side. And so I don't want to pre-cut that or I might make it too short. So now I'm going to start working with the other hand and continue wrapping it around. I've reached with my yarn to the other end where I get to the end of the wire and now I am left with my loose yarn at the end and so I'm going to put a tiny dab, just a tiny dab of hot glue there where you won't be able to see it and I'm going to make two passes to cover that hot glue and then I will be able to cut my yarn end off and you want to cut it nice and tight to it so that you don't even see it. If you're impatient and you really want to see what your first arch looks like, feel free to bend it as much as you want to get that shape because it's wire inside. And so you can see I have the start of my first arch and I'm going to do the same step that I did with this with my three other colors on the three other gradient sizes that we made for the rainbow. And then I'll show you how we attach them together. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Second guess which one I picked up. I was like, oh, I want the next color to be I love yellow. the colors you picked. I really love how this is sort of an orangey yeah. yellow color because it brings out that orange and blue complementary. And so when I'm thinking about the colors, I'm thinking about all the color families. And then also maybe where someone would hang it. If I want one to go maybe in a baby nursery or something, then maybe I want to make it really pastel colors or in a bigger kid's room, maybe colors like this. Or you could go really organic and even have this hanging in your living room or something. It just depends on what decor, but I definitely want one for my studio.
So before I actually attach them together, this is sort of what I have, and I like the color scheme that I went with. You can see I just bent them sort of into the shapes that I wanted, and that's gonna give me a little bit of a head start on piecing them together. And all you're going to do, and this is get could get very messy if you're not patient with it, but you're going to put a little bit of hot glue on the inside rim of each of your layers, and then piece them together, and then push them firmly together so you don't have any pocket holes. You really get the glue exploding on the front and the back if you use too much glue. The less is more in this case, you're just attaching it together and yarn really attaches pretty easily. So I'm going to do a very small bead across. And of course, hot glue dries pretty quickly. So you wanna move in a decent pace to get across. And then you're going to put it on the outside. What I like to do is try to line up my ends as close as I possibly can so that everything is even. And then just push it together. You can see I'm level on both sides. My shape looks good. And I don't have any air gaps in between if I press it nice and tight. So there's the start. And I'm going to do my next two colors now in the same way. What do I believe? What makes me feel it? To write you this song Two hours a day Five months and a year Oh, I loved you too long And then because these ones are already in the shape that I want, for the fourth one, I'm going to put the glue on the outside and then just insert it in between. And there you have your four arches ready on your rainbow. And you can see that I left just this really long kind of end here. I'm gonna show you how to fray that. But before we get to that final step, I just wanna show you a little trick on how I put a hanger on this because the first couple times I thought, oh no, I forgot to put it on that first arch, but there's just a really easy way to add it at the end. And that's why I chose a very thin jute here that I'm going to put into a pin and thread on. So just taking the jute, I'm just going to double it up and then feed my little loop end into this upholstery needle here. So now I'm going to put the threaded in. I'm going to stick it in between the third and the fourth ring here. Pull it all the way through to there. And then I'm going to pull the needle off and I have the loop at the back and I'm going to pull those strings through it to make that little loop on there. And then I can double tie at the top here and make a little bit of a knot. But if you want to put a bead on, you need to do that first. So I'm going to string on a really cute little bead. And I prefer more of like a natural wooden bead. So I'm going to put it on mine. I'm just going to use this little flat simple one. You could paint them, and do a cute little color scheme on them if you want to. I have them in all different shapes, but I just want this little flat oval one for this one. And I'm going to thread it on to these end strings before I tie my knot. And then I can just make a double loop knot on the top. So there, my macrame rainbow can hang, but I don't have my phrase at the bottom yet. And so what you're going to do is lay out your rainbow and separate these strands that are sort of just twisted together. And you're going to get these really curly ends, which you can also just leave that way with your macrame if you wanted to. They don't have to be frayed out. The little zigzag curly ends are pretty cute too. So you notice that I didn't cut these yet, and I am going to give the macrame rainbow a little bit of a haircut for the tasseled ends once I fray them out. That way I'll be able to see if my lines are even or not, because you can tell I have all these variant sizes. And so I'm going to use a hairbrush, or you can use a comb if you'd like, and you're just going to brush them like you would brush your hair, and they will start to flare out. And that's why I like to use the actual macrame rope because other rope may not get this frayed effect at the end. So you can see how the lengths have really changed now that I have actually frayed it out, which is why I didn't cut it first. And you wanna be careful that you don't hook your comb on the actual yarn because it'll make a rip on where your nice ends are that you worked so hard to make on the end. So now that I can see a bit of the length, I'm just going to take the scissors and cut the tassel frayed ends to the length that I want. A really longer tassel looks super cute, or you can do a shorter one like I did in the pre-example. I'm just going to make mine probably about an inch and a half and go all the way across. And there I have my cut tassels end for my macrame rainbow. 
So ideally what you wanna do is be able to do this in a really neat and tidy way so that both sides of your rainbow equally look as good. That way, if someone is hanging it and it spins around, it's going to look good on all sides. And so now what I wanna do, since I know that this is something that I'm going to wanna have in my shop, I'm going to create a really cute little tag. I had a couple different ideas, like dreams really do come true, like something that said in the song that I used to sing the boys. When you're opening a shop, you're going to have a lot of expenses just in the inventory that you wanna to create to actually have the items that you wanna sell. And so when you're working on packaging and things to actually make the presentation of your shipped item really lovely, it's going to also cost a substantial amount of money. And so I'm looking to cut costs any way that I possibly can by just using my creativity and some reusable materials. So I think I can create some really cute packaging for these rainbows. So I've taken this really tiny, it's about an inch and a half by two inch piece of scrap wood, and I'm going to create my own little foam stamp that I can make some wrapping paper to actually wrap all of the rainbows. So I'm going to try this. I haven't done this before, so fingers crossed it works, but playing with a few ideas. So I'm going to use this foam paper and draw four arches of a rainbow and then I'll be able to cut it out. I need to keep with the size of what my stamp is because I know this fits on my stamp pad because I pre-measured. So I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a guide with my pencil there and then just draw my rainbow. First arch. I'm gonna need a space so the ink won't go there. There. Some space. And then arch on the outside. Okay, and then I'm gonna cut that out and then be able to glue it on. Let's see if this works. And then I'm just going to glue it on with the hot glue gun. I'm totally going to burn myself to this. <laughs> Okay, moment of truth, DIY stamp, win or fail. <laughs> so I have it glued on and I made sure that I didn't have any little flyaways from the hot glue. I used an exact one just to make sure that anything that gooped in between because foam paper melts just a little bit when you use the hot glue. So I think next time maybe I'll use like a thick clear Gorilla Glue or something instead, but this is just a trial template. So if this works, many more stamps to come. <laughs> so I'm going to stamp it on my ink pad. See if I can get it to stamp. And I want to use as many recyclable materials as I can when I'm packaging my items for my shop, which is why I thought, oh, it works. I just didn't put enough ink on it. Oh, how cute is that? I just didn't get enough ink on that one, but I'm not sure I can line it up perfectly. So I'm sure when it's wrapped, you won't see that part anyway. Okay, I'm obsessed. I will be doing no more adulting for the rest of the evening. I'll just be making stamps. Oh, 
custom Alicia English wrapping paper? Yes, please. I ordered several rolls of this recycled paper. That way I know that what I'm using isn't going to affect the planet and that we can actually either reuse this if you take it off carefully or you could even cut a piece off and put it in a little frame or something. I think it's super cute. And so what I did was I also ordered some bright, cheery tissue paper because the idea behind my ideas that I wanna have in my shop are that these packages are super cheery and bring people a lot of joy and just inspiration and sort of that dream big vibe. And so I want people to open the boxes and it just scream nothing but wanting to smile. So I chose a really happy blue and I ordered some cardboard boxes that can be recycled. So I'm going to build up these boxes and I wanna make a really cute little tag that will actually go onto the rainbow that says dreams really do come true. So that's what I'm gonna do next. So this box, once it has paper in it, will be the perfect size for me to be able to put my rainbows in. And so I wanna be able to attach the little tag that says dreams really do come true on the front here so that when you open it up, you'll be able to see it. And that's what I'm going to do on some white cardstock. So I don't know exactly the length of what my tag will be while I use these little reusable stamps that I have. And again, the idea is to be able to use materials that you don't have to buy every single time or pay to have stickers printed. Sometimes when you're opening a shop, the time it takes you to make things is a little bit of a investment instead of money. And that way you'll be able to have some personalized items that will really make an impact on the idea of the, what person's going to get on the other end. So I have my stamp pad and my little wooden stamps. So I'm gonna start with the word dreams. I'm going to leave a bit of a space here so that I can do a hole punch at the end. Where is the line between dreaming and feeling? It's four o'clock in the evening. I haven't left my room. But the truth is, if I'm honest, I feel stuck here. This heavy cardstock worked perfectly with the stamps and now I'm going to cut it out and then be able to hole punch a hole at the top. So I still have to put my Alicia English monogram that I'm going to be putting on all the boxes, but I want to try out that wrapping paper and just make sure. So I will unwrap this later and put it together exactly how it would be when it was shipped, but I'm dying to see if that wrapping paper looks really cute or not. So we're going to wrap it up and I know I made a bigger piece than I'll need, but I just thought I would give it a try. All the professional gift wrappers are going to scream at me during this video. <laughs> I'm always in awe of everyone's beautiful gift wrapping at Christmas. I like the rainbow print. I think that's super cute. And then of course the shipping labels and the address labels and everything will all be on top of this as well. And then I'll be able to ship this off in the mail. Because when I think of rainbows, I always think of dreaming big and I hope that my channel inspires you to have the biggest dreams and when you reach those, create more. Because that's exactly what we're doing on our channel is creating a life we love and living out our dreams as best as we possibly can. Every single day is just a little stepping stone closer to what you're working on. So leave in the comment section, what is a dream that you are working on right now that you're actively trying to reach and achieve? We can cheer each other on in the comment section. So leave it down below. I'm dying to know. If you are new to our channel, make sure to subscribe. And if you're part of our YouTube family, head over to Facebook and join our new creative group. We're doing a December create challenge on there. And we're going to be doing them monthly and we're doing a lot of really fun creative conversations. So hit join. I'll put the link in the description box down below. Thank you so much for joining me. I love you and I will see you on the next video.